Back in the winter of 1997, Senior Sergeant Legg, the father of two boys, inherited more than a murder investigation. He was lumped with a colourful cast of characters who test the patience of a saint. Welcome to part two of the story of Jaden Lesky. Just a quick recap to refresh your memory. Jaden went missing on the weekend of the 14th and 15th of June 1997. We're at the point now where Belinda, his mother, and her boyfriend, Greg Domasevic, go to the Moe police station between 4 and 5 a.m. to report Jaden missing and that a pig's head has been thrown through his front window. All the players in this story were interviewed by the police, including Belinda and Greg Domasevic was interviewed twice, once on the Sunday and then again on the following Tuesday, the 17th of June 1997. This is part of that interview. Have you taken any illicit drugs at all recently? What's illicit drugs? Drugs that are illegal? Possibly, yeah, I would have had a bit. What type of drugs do you take? Just usually a bit of, just gooch really. What do you know gooch to be? Marijuana. And when did you last use marijuana? Probably Friday. So you're in the backyard and you've finished up working on your car. You've come inside with young Jaden? Yeah. And at this stage, what have you done? We just sat around and just talked about getting him washed up and me washed up. Got his clothes out, give him a quick sort of wash. He was standing in front of the heater and that, yeah, like, but I mean, he was like anything you'd put near the heater, like he was standing there, like he'd get red, you know? Kids are, that's that's all that, that's all it was, really nothing to worry about. I just sat there because, I mean, like, I remember last time Brianna put shampoo in his eyes and the last babysitter called an ambulance, this and that and everything else. And I thought, well, you know, you could rinse it out first or something. Why did Katie ask about Jaden's red bum? Because I was would have told like Belinda just said maybe he had a sore bum or something, I don't know. Isn't it correct that earlier in the interview you said that Jaden was not burnt by the heater? No, he was just red. And isn't it correct you told Belinda that Jaden was not burnt by the heater? Yeah. And then you're saying in the car trip home that you told Belinda that Jaden was seeing a doctor because of the burn? I think so. Why do you say shit like that? I don't know, because I thought like, then she could get home and there's her little boy and she was with me, so I guess she would have been really happier. Happier, you know what I mean? Why didn't you go to Traralgon, Morwell or some other police station and report this matter? I don't know, just thought I could probably do something myself first. But what actually did you do yourself? Well, go and see if I could find Jade. By going to Belinda, to Yvonne's and peeking under her curtains, did you knock on her door? No. Is it possible he's had some form of accident and died and that in a panicked state you've thought of some way to cover it up? You understand that this is a situation where, from an investigator's point of view, where the last person to see Jaden alive is yourself? Hmm. Are you quite satisfied in your mind that Jaden was alive when you left him that night? Hmm. Did you put anything in your rubbish bin just prior to leaving to go to Traralgon? Maybe rubbish bags or something? Yeah. Can you remember doing that? Yeah, probably, I don't know. That's, I can't remember, like, you know. We conducted a search of the rubbish bin. Yeah, and we located a number of tissues with what we believe to be blood on them. Mm. Can you tell me whose blood was on those tissues? Either be mine, me dog's or Jade's. J 
Jade fell over and done something, I just wiped his nose or lip or something. That was it. Yeah, didn't touch him. Right. Jade fell over and hurt himself? Not hurt himself, no. Well, you're saying he's bleeding. Well, that's what I mean, like, he, like with the dogs, it's like I remember the first time I seen him, he had a scab on his nose, and the dog licked it off, okay? Like, yeah, it was terrible, yeah, terrible, why didn't you mention this before? Well, some of the tissues looked as though they'd been rolled up, as if to put to a nose or something like that. Did Jaden have a bleeding nose? Um... This is a very easy question. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Bleeding across. Yeah. Was Jaden's nose bleeding? He would be. Was. What have you done to Jaden? I haven't done anything to Jaden. I don't think so. That's what I mean. He was there, like I said, something. I don't know. Nobody was there the whole time, alright, and everything. So. Has something happened at your place and you've struck Jaden? No, no, yeah, Jaden's good, yeah. I know Jaden is good, but we all have tempers and we all have breaking points. Has there been something that's happened with Jaden that's caused you to lose your temper? No, it's like my friend, that's what I mean, like. You can ask people how I am with me animals and that, you know, like, yeah, no. Would you tell us if Belinda had killed Jaden? No, she wouldn't, I wouldn't. See, we're left in a situation where we've got a missing 14-month-old boy and we're extremely concerned for his welfare. Mm. Now, if it turns out that he's alive and well, we'll be the happiest men you've ever seen. But the situation is, at the moment, it's... You're the last person to see him alive. We found certain things at the scene, at your house, that may indicate that something's happened to Jaden. Hmm... You've had the conversation with us tonight. You had conversation with other police on Sunday. In fact, there was five audio tapes consisting of some hours. Why, until I mentioned tissues with blood on them, don't you tell anyone that Jaden's cut himself and had a fall? Well, I don't really think nothing of it. That's what I mean. Like, it's not like, you know, I thought maybe it was may eat me even like a dog bump him to him and he fell, something like that. I can't even remember, like, the the occurrence or whatever. How many tissues do you think you used to mop up the cut on Jaden? Maybe one or two, if that, yeah? Okay, there's five tissues there with blood on them. Well, yeah, well, if that's what they're there, that's what's there, but I wouldn't think nothing like that, no. And the tissues would indicate that it was more than just a graze or a small type of injury that would require just a little bit of dabbing to get the blood off. Yeah, I think, well, he's, well, Jaden did bleed a lot though too. Greg Domasevich was charged with Jaden's murder three to four weeks after Jaden went missing. And a lot of Maui residents thought he was guilty even before he'd had a trial. Evidence the state collected against Greg Domasevich included multiple interviews with the Pig's Head crew, who all testified that they heard no baby crying, nor were any of them seen leaving the area with a baby. They also had the five bloody tissues twisted at the ends, and Jaden's skin cells on the heater in the lounge room. Further to this, there was that $600 in wet money that was under Greg's mattress that he said was from the sale of a boat, as well as his wallet that was found in his car soaking wet, so much so that the business cards inside had ink running on them. Greg said he'd been working on his car and it started raining and that's how it got wet, but it doesn't explain the ink bleeding on the cards that would take great saturation in water. While the search was on, Greg stayed the night with a couple of friends, Darren and Sheena Farr. They said that they witnessed him watching the television when the search for Jaden at the Yaloon tip was being televised. And they heard him say, he's not there, he's not there. As well as, bloody idiots, they won't find nothing there. There was also evidence that should have been presented, but it wasn't done by Maui police. Fingerprints weren't taken from Greg's house, 
nor was his car forensically searched fully. On Tuesday night after the second interview, they tailed him to see if he would lead them to Jaden, but he didn't. He went to Belinda's house, and this is why the car had only been given a cursory once over with a few photographs. The search for Jaden was underway as soon as he was reported missing, and on Tuesday, the 17th of June 1997, waterways were searched because of the links to the wet money and wet wallet. Lake Narakan, 8 kilometres to the northeast. Mundara Dam, 15 kilometres north, and also the Yulurum Tip. The police said that their finances didn't extend to searching Blue Rock Dam, even though it was a place that Greg enjoyed taking Jaden on a fairly regular basis. On New Year's Day 1998, a young boy was playing at Blue Rock Dam when he saw something floating in the water. As he brought it closer, he recognised that it was a crowbar attached to a sleeping bag and that there was a body inside. The police were called to the scene and all the evidence was laid out on the ground including a plastic bag that contained clothing and a bottle. The stitching had come undone on the sleeping bag and the entire thing had risen to the surface. When Jaden was found, his arm was broken in two places and a splint had been put on it with some sort of ruler and some tape. There was also unknown female DNA that wasn't Belinda's on the bib and the pants found in a plastic bag along with a bottle. On the 3rd of January, a guy named Paul Liaotzu was asleep and he was woken by his mother who came into his room crying. She had a copy of the Herald Sun in her hand. Uh, on the front page was a picture of a police diver emerging from water with a crowbar under his arm and a bag attached. There's your crowbar, Paul, she said between tears. Lizard had not been able to find his crowbar or his tree loppers since he'd left them at Greg's while doing some gardening in the week leading up to Jaden's disappearance. A week after Jaden went missing, he had rung Greg, then called in to see him. He'd asked Greg about getting his tools back because Greg's brother needed some gardening work done. Greg had told him that the tools were in the back of his car which the police had in Melbourne for testing. Later, when Lizard knew Greg had his car back, he asked again. This time Greg told him that the tools were at Darren Farr's, but when Lizard went around to collect them, he could only find the tree loppers. The Farr's were adamant that the crowbar was not with any items dropped at their house. Later on, a picture emerged of the boot of Greg's car, and in it you could clearly see a roll of tape. This tape wasn't entered into evidence at the trial, so presumably it had been lost or overlooked, but it certainly could have matched the tape that was found wrapped around Jaden's arm in that splint, which would then tie Greg Domasevich's car to the crime scene. And here is the report about that tape. Jaden Lesky was murdered 20 years ago. This was a case that rocked Victoria. It's one that hasn't really left me, and for many other people, we've still been wondering what happened to this poor 14-month-old child who was found in a dam six, month after, six months after he was murdered. Keith Moore is the Herald Sun's Insight Editor. He's been following the case for more than two decades. Keith, you've got some new information about the case. Yes, look, there's been that many twists and turns over the 20 years. You would think after 20 years, there would be no twists and turns left, and yet, there's actually a new bit of evidence that uh, at the time, in hindsight, is a wonderful thing, but it could be crucial in that Greg turned up in his car to Moy Police Station to, at four o'clock in the morning to report with Belinda that Jaden was missing. Uh, Sergeant Max Hill was the cop in charge there. Uh, he realised straight away that there was something a bit weird going on and that it was more than just a, a missing child just from Greg's demeanour. So he put them in two separate rooms and, and interviewed them over Greg over a period of about 11 hours. He also searched Greg's car and uh, to, to keep it as evidence and in the boot was a roll of like duct tape which he took a photograph of and made, made it evidence and then called the homicide squad because he realized that there was probably a dead kid involved 
The homicide squad then turn up and take the case away from Max Hill, as is the norm, and they quite rightly and understandably, their main concern was to find Jaden. Um, so they, probably against the normal rules of evidence, allowed Greg to leave at two o'clock in the morning after being questioned with the car. Greg headed off, they obviously hoped, and they had undercover coppers following him, which is why it took so long, kept him there at two o'clock in the morning, undercover coppers following him in the hope that Greg would actually lead them to Jaden's body or Jaden being alive. Sadly, he didn't. He, uh, he just drove straight to Belinda's house. Now, it was six months later that Jaden's body turned up in Blue Rock Dram, New Year's Day. Jaden had a very badly broken arm, and I'm talking not just a crack, I'm talking completely shattered. How bad? Oh, it looked completely shattered through. Like, it, it, in a, it, at the trial, it was sort of likened to something that would happen in a car crash or something really heavy. Go, like, it's hard, it's hard to break your arm that badly. Mm. He'd been crudely bandaged with, first of all, like a crepe-type bandage, but on top of that, tape had been taped all around the bandage. Now, nobody knew at the time that, that that duct tape that was in Greg's car, the night he reported missing, might one day be vital evidence in that, let's just imagine they'd kept that tape. Uh, forensically, there would be a cut in it or a tear. Imagine if you took the roll of tape and put it to the end of the tape that was around the arm and it matched perfectly. That would be the first bit of actual concrete evidence linking Greg to the murder and Max Hill believes, had the jury been shown that evidence, he would have been convicted and not acquitted. That's how important that roll of tape could have been. Uh, hindsight, as I say, a wonderful thing. Nobody to blame for not keeping an evidence. Sure. The, the priority was obviously to find Jaden, but gee, if only that roll of tape had been kept, that outcome could have been different at the trial. Claims by three prisoners that Domasevich confessed to killing Jaden were of limited value although the evidence of one of them, Prisoner R, was of most value because it had not been undermined in cross-examination and had been corroborated in several respects. Prisoner R, whose name was suppressed, gave evidence that Domasevic told him his car fell off the jack and landed on Jaden's arm and that Jaden was screaming so he slipped him something to calm him down. Drugs were found in Jaden's body at the autopsy. Prisoner R also claimed Domasevich told him he couldn't shut Jaden up, so he put a pillow over Jaden's head and hit it with a crowbar. Remember, Jaden's body was weighed down with a crowbar, which was exactly like the one that had gone missing. The defence's strategy was to point the finger at everyone and anyone, particularly Tubby, who had gone to get that pig's head on his motorbike. But remember, he came home, put it in a bucket of water and went straight back to bed. The trial ran from October to December 1998, and in December 1998, Greg Domasevich was acquitted of the murder of Jaden Lasky. The rest how happy I am with him really, so that's really about it. What, happens, what were you thinking? What happens, say, what happens now about the investigation, Wayne? What do you want to I see now? I just hope they go look into it, I guess, you know. There have been no less than three inquests into Jaden's death. The first was a closed inquest in June 2002 and laid no blame for the death. The second was stopped in December 2004 after the Supreme Court upheld an application by Mr Domasevich's lawyer that the coroner was acting outside his jurisdiction and this is what he had had to say about it. After a long trial, a jury acquitted him of murder, but later a coroner declared this. After Jaden's death, Mr Thomas Savage disposed of his body in nearby Blue Rock Dam. The third inquest in 2006 only involved Greg Domasevich because he had been secretly recorded having a conversation with Stephen Veneman, the brother of uh, underworld character Benji Veneman. What about when you tormented that kid? That was different. It was a long time ago. Well, why was that different? You dropped that car on it, mate. No, mate, I'm telling you now. There's a big difference from that and murder. That, that for a start, is accidental death. Greg Domasevich's acquittal in 1998 of the murder means he cannot be rearrested as the law of double jeopardy gives him immunity. 
the state government had been examining the laws of double jeopardy and are considering allowing retrials in special circumstances. A spokesman for Attorney General Rob Hull said the government was considering abolishing double jeopardy in cases of tainted acquittals where a witness or juror is bribed. The law of double jeopardy, founded in common law 800 years ago, was scrapped in England and Wales in 2005. The English Court of Appeal can now quash an acquittal and order a retrial when new and compelling evidence is discovered. Jaden Lesky's murder remains unsolved, but the toddler's grandmother says in her eyes the case is closed. So sad to think that that little boy didn't get to grow up, but having an, a court case and all that one's not going to bring him back. In April of 2014, Belinda wrote an open letter to Greg Domasevich and asked the Sunday Herald Sun to publish it. She wrote the following. Soon it should be Jaden's 18th birthday. I have been thinking about it for weeks. What would I do on the day he was born, 18 years later, without him here? What would I do on this day to remember my son and do something in his memory? What I wouldn't give to have him here in the morning when he wakes up, spoil him with presents and be able to wish him a happy 18th birthday. Instead, it will be a day of no presents and no presents. Instead, I write this letter to you, Greg Domasevich. I have already pressed delete a million times while typing this because, really, what do I say to you? There isn't a day that passes in my life that I don't say good morning or good night to Jaden. I don't always say it out loud and mostly keep my thoughts in my own head. What I can't understand is how you can look in that mirror each day and know what you did to my whole entire family. At first, when all this happened, it was all a bit of a blur. I never imagined in my wildest dreams that I would ever wake up to the nightmare that this has been and probably will be until my last breath. I am now 38 years old. I still wake up every day and go to bed every night. I cry in silence. I think in silence. I am somewhat trapped in my own mind because I don't want to burden anyone with what I feel or what I go through each and every single day. I have lost friends and my entire family because of the bitter and untrusting person I have become today. I take my children to school and every single day a part of me is scared they won't be there when I go to pick them up. I rarely let them stay over at friends' houses in case something happens and in a way I spoil them so they have everything they need at home and won't want to go to a friend's houses. I will be making my children's school lunches in the morning and a part of me feels guilty that when I am buttering that bread that I'm not making his lunch for him. I can be brushing my hair and wonder what his hair would be like, what he would look like, what he would smell like. I will be in the laundry folding the washing and wondering what he would be wearing today. Where is his pile of clothes? I pretend he is sitting on the end of my bed in the middle of the night and I stare at the end of the bed hoping that this could all just be a nightmare from which I will some way wake up from. When Daniel Morecambe's killer was sentenced recently, a part of me was happy to see that pig rot in jail for the rest of his life, yet a part of me was a little jealous that Jaden's case is still a mystery. You will never, ever even come close to what a mother goes through when her child is taken from her. When Jaden was missing, I kept telling myself that he would turn 18 someday and find me. I honestly believed that. But he will be turning 18 soon, and I know there will be no knock on the door. When Michael Roberts came up to the top of the hill at Blue Rock Dam that day he was found, and sat me in his car and explained to me that it was Jaden's body that was found. I can't even begin to explain what hearing those words were like to a parent. When I lost Jaden, I lost myself. I have no real friends, I have no family left. I push people away because I find it extremely hard to trust anyone now near my children. As soon as people get close to me, I start panicking and find reasons to eliminate them from my life 
rather than them hurt me or my children. I was asked recently how I would celebrate Jaden's birthday. Celebrate is used for happy times, happy memories, and I won't celebrate Jaden's birthday because I can't. Please, before you die, write down what happened and store it somewhere. But please, if anything, for Jaden, let the truth be known to all. I know nothing that ever happens in the future. Nothing will ever bring him back to me. But we deserve to know what happened. So please, before your own life ends, please just tell the truth. Jaden deserves that much. At the time of airing this video, in March 2019, nobody has been brought to justice for the death of Jaden Lesky. Greg Domasiewicz was not charged with any further crimes. He still lives in Maui, a rather depressing life, and will do till his dying days. Make no mistake, this is not a cold case. It's not a mystery. It's simply a miscarriage of justice.